Hello and good morning to everyone in Cork. Um, today I'm going to present to you what we have done in Work Package 5 uh, in the past four years during the Yomopans project. Unfortunately, uh, the three of us, um, so Jens, Dennis and me, um, cannot be in Cork today uh, because we have to be in Rostock here at the Baltic Sea Day. Um, but um, we're still happy to present to you um, what we have done and um, also what we could achieve. Um, so the work of the work package five um, comprised the measurements and um, the data management. And um, so the, the measurements are obviously an important part of any ambient noise monitoring effort. And as you know, the um, Yomopans, uh, so the aim of the Jomopans project was to establish a long-term joint ambient noise monitoring in the North Sea. And uh, we took care that the measurements were gathered jointly and co coordinatedly uh, during the project. Um, the measured data that we gathered was um, subsequently used for um, uh, for the validating of the noise maps um, or the verification of the noise maps. And um, also we um, took care and um, analyzed the data ourselves to get um, ever more insights um, of the soundscapes at the respective measurement positions that we have. So the work package uh, was divided into three main topics, which are the measurements, the data processing, the data management and sharing. Um, so we ensured that um, all of the measurements um, were done in a, in a comparable way. We also ensured that the data processing was carried out um, so that the, um, the data was comparable um, between the different partners uh, and provided the data to the relevant work packages. And uh, this is the last point, this is the data management and sharing. So during the project, uh, we set up an FTP server and on this FTP server, we shared the measured data and later and also other data such as the noise maps were shared so that the relevant work packages could, um, could um, um, properly work together. And during the project, um, we, as the Jungpans Consortium, were measuring at 18 uh, measurement locations across the North Sea. Um, so actually 17 locations in the North Sea and one location up at the Lofoten Islands uh, in Norway. And so this Lofoten, uh, this Lovis station data uh, that was used for the verification of the model in 2018. And all of the of the stations that were distributed across the North Sea um, were uh, maintained by nine different measuring institutions uh, across the North Sea that you can see here on on the right. And um, so we decided jointly as Work Package Five um, where we wanted to measure in the North Sea, and we also um, um, decided how we wanted to measure in terms of uh, frequency range, duty cycle, um, and so forth. Um, however. Each partner was uh, responsible on their own um, for the proper deployment and maintenance and um, um, also the recovery of their instruments. And um, so regarding the measurement period, so initially it was planned to measure um, only during the entire calendar year of 2019. But um, as you know, um, the Jumbo Funds project um, was granted an extension in the summer of 2021. And um, so fortunately, some partners had kept on measuring during 2020 because now this data from 2020 uh, can be used for validating new sound maps um, that were just produced by TNO for the year of 2020. So um, we have now data available for two years, 2019 and 2020. And this data um, um, is, is, is very important for the validation of the sound maps which we are now also having for 2019 and for 2020. During the Jumpans project, uh, we used different hydrophone systems and different setups at each station. So there was not a real standard for that, but uh, the different partners um, could use um, their, their instruments that, were, that they had anyway uh, before the project already. Um, so we had uh, various kinds of setups. Uh, so we had at the beginning of the of the project, we had five cable stations, uh, namely the Western station in Belgium, the Swedish Winger station, the two German Fino stations, and the Lovis station in um, Norway, and 13 autonomous um, uh, loggers distributed across uh, the North Sea. 
and we agreed uh, to use the same measurement settings. So we uh, were using the same frequency range from 10 hertz to 20 kilohertz. Uh, we set the minimum sensitivity that the systems were uh, uh, needed to have, and um, um, so um, standard bit depth that we wanted to have for the instruments. But still, um, the the actual instrument and the ex uh, so the recorder or the hydrophone um, differed from station to station, and from partner to partner. And we considered this um, as a strength from the very beginning of the project because um, we wanted to show that even with the diversity of instruments, um, we can um, arrive at a, at, a, at a data set of ground truth um, ambient noise measurements um, that is comparable and that can be used um, for validating uh, noise maps. But obviously, when you're measuring offshore, uh, you have to face um, some problems. So it's uh, not that easy, and uh, um, and sometimes it's also not predictable um, what will be the outcome of the measurements. Um, so the systems that we deploy offshore need to endure winds, currents, and waves, and are prone to um, corrosion and biofouling, as you can see on the top right picture, as an example. Um, and another problem which we have in the tidal dominated North Sea is uh, obviously flow noise, uh, which is a sound source, um, so a pseudo sound source that is um, um, not included in, in, in any um, sound uh, modeling. So, um, so this posed another problem um, that we had in our measurements and um, so that we tried to quantify but also try to avoid. But so this is uh, so another difficulty. And uh, so one other main problem that we had were, uh, was fishing. So uh, even in the remotest areas of the North Sea, like for example here on the, on the picture, we show um, the, um, the ES-1 station, which we had in the center of the North Sea, and uh, which was just um, probably swallowed away by, um, by some, some fishing vessels and was uh, later found on, on, the, on the west coast of Sweden. Um, so these these are just problems, and we um, also heard of um, heard of um, instruments that uh, vanished completely and were never found again. And probably also this happened uh, due to due to fishing activities. And um, so this is something that uh, we need to have in mind when we're thinking about uh, measurements um, offshore, and also when we think about the finances associated uh, with uh, such measurements. So, um, as I said, we were using um, many kinds of different instrumentation, and we were also using um, different algorithms to process the data. But still, it was our task to ensure that the data, which we later on um, um, gave to Work Package 6, was comparable across the whole North Sea region. So what we did, we carried out um, two, um, two um, ring tests or two benchmark exercises. Um, the first benchmark exercise is focused on the processing of, um, of the data. And in this exercise, um, all partners were asked to um, process the same synthetic um, signals, pink and white noise, and, um, and um, process the sound pressure levels for um, a set of uh, percentiles. And these uh, sound pressure levels were compared by NPL. Uh, the results um, you can, are here presented on the top right, or uh, one of the plots from the from the results. And uh, so NPL found that um, um, all of the results, all of the sound pressure levels, were within an acceptable range. So um, that it could be ensured that even if um, different uh, processing algorithms were used by the different partners, um, the results in the end were still comparable. Uh, one other thing that we needed to take care of was um, the calibration. So we need to ensure that the calibration of each partner was performed in a comparable way. To do so, uh, we carried out an, um, um, a calibration exercise um, where the partners could bring their instruments to NPL in Teddington, and NPL carried out a low frequency calibration of the instrument up to 300 Hertz. And this calibration then consequently could be compared against um, the calibration which all of the partners had uh, done at home already. And also this uh, comparison came to the conclusion that all partners uh, were capable of um, performing um, adequate um, uh, calibrations that led to, uh, to comparable results. Um, so, and 
The last thing was to ensure that um, a set of quality control steps were provided by each partner on their own before they upload the data to our FTP server. Therefore, there was a set of, um, of um, um, uh, quality control steps that needed to be done. And um, so then the data was uploaded. All of those steps and also the two ring tests are um, described more in detail in the reports of Web Package 3, which you can find on the Jomopans uh, web page. And then when we talk about the upload of the data, uh, we also need to ensure that the data was in, a, um, in the same format. And for the Jumo Funds project, um, we, um, um, we um, thought of an, an uh, HDFI format uh, only for this project, um, for the purpose of this project, which was uh, the Jumo Funds um, HDFI format. And all of the partners uploaded the data in this format. But um, as the project proceeded, uh, we came to realize um, that we wanted to um, provide um, all of the data to the public when the, uh, when the project ends. And uh, so the ICES database um, poses a very good um, opportunity for this. Uh, but they have a different, a different um, HDFI format. So what we did is uh, we... Um, um, uh, we built um, a translator or converter, which you can see here also on the right, uh, which we now can use to convert our Jomopans data, but also um, palm guide output to the um, HDFI format, um, which um, you need to upload to the ISIS database. So, and this is what we have in the end. So when you follow all of the steps that I've just went through, uh, we arrive at this data coverage. So here you can see the spectrograms of all the 18 stations. Um, so in, in fact, these are 19 stations because in 2020, the Hönü station from Sweden was also um, uh, was also added to our to our data, and all of those steps that uh, that were taken for the measurement and for the processing and for the quality uh, checks are described also in the measurement guidelines from Work Package Five, uh, which is um, our end report, which you can also uh, see on the Jomopans uh, web page. And this data was then provided to Work Package Six, and uh, Work Package Six um, could uh, proceed and uh, compare these time series against uh, the model time series at the respective positions. And um, so um, this led to um, the uh, validation um, report and also to um, the publication by Ross, which you probably are all aware of, which was recently uh, published where all of this validation effort um, can be seen. And the validated, um, the validated sound maps are also all available online um, in the GES tool. Um, I think we will hear more about this tomorrow by Emily. So um, here you can see how our measured data was helpful um, in creating or validating these, these maps. Um, but the gathered data um, just holds uh, much more information and it was uh, so we wanted to use the data not only for the validation but we also wanted to see what other information uh, we can get out of uh, out of the data uh, regarding the soundscapes at the, at the, uh, at the measurement positions and uh, what uh, so uh, currently we are busy with writing up um, um, a publication where we want to focus on the presentation of the data and we want to compare the data um, across the different measurement positions and across the North Sea and what we also do is we correlate the measured uh, sound pressure levels with uh, wind and shipping. So that's um, the input sources for the Jumopans model. But also we want to correlate, or we also already did so, we correlated the sound pressure levels with currents to um, focus on uh, the stations where flow noise is a problem. And we also try to quantify by how much flow noise is a problem and by how much shipping or wind contribute to the soundscape at the various stations. And since we are looking at the data from 2019 and 2020, uh, the obvious thing to do is that we also look um, at an effect of the uh, COVID-19 pandemic um, between the two years. And all of this um, we hope to be able to write up in the coming months and we hope also to be able to publish um, this data. So on the right, we, you can see here one of, uh, so we are, we are just busy with making plots for, for this uh, publication. And this was one of the, of the first pl uh, plots, plot ideas where we just wanted to um, show the, the variability and the variety of soundscapes 
and what you can see here is the histograms of the um, of the decadal sound pressure levels for all 18 stations but uh, probably um, this uh, won't make it to any publication but here you can see uh, what i just talked about here you um, you can see the correlations on the on the, on the left with uh, red and blue so where we want to show that here on, on in the lowest picture you can see the low frequency correlation with currents in the mid you, in the um, you can see uh, the mid frequency correlation with the shipping at all 18 stations and in the top uh, panel you can see um, the um, the uh, correlation with the wind noise in high frequency bands and also low frequency bands and you can see that it differs at the various stations and so we will discuss this um, so and this is still an interesting thing to do and i hope you got an idea of uh, so what we're doing now and what we have already done uh, in the in the in the past and obviously what we also have done a lot is a lot of uh, field work offshore so um thank you very much and um i look forward uh, to your questions <laughs>